We really needed a memorial, that we really needed it to help us that are still alive keep fighting. today on you I think it gives me a, a greater sense of community just to see the other people from the other states it's, it's pretty pretty moving. <laughs> it is it's a beautiful thing it is a beautiful thing that we have an approved drug by the FDA for the prevention of HIV infection. Truvada, it's been on the market for some time, but now for the first time, it's been approved as what's being called a prevention drug. What does this mean in the overall fight against HIV and AIDS? PrEP has been a godsend. It's been the ingredient we have needed for so long and haven't had. Everyone should have a right to sex without fear. Across the world, this is not a trivial matter. Just today, 137 people in this country will get HIV. And my question is, what are we really doing today to stop this? People have had an opportunity to hear about it, and they're not voting to swallow those pills. If this generation puts its body on the line by taking a pill, the virus is going to be gone. If there's nobody to infect you, then the, the epidemic will be over. We thought this was going to be over in the 90s. At least I did. I thought, this can't keep going like this. And when 2000 came and went, and we were no closer to a cure, and we were no closer to a vaccine, that's when this hopelessness started coming in. That I, I don't think I'm ever gonna live without this being a presence in my life. And I don't think I'm ever going to be able to have sexual freedom without the fear of HIV. That came to be something I accepted. So, 30 of these come in a bottle. This is one single dose that I take every single day, just one of these, to remain HIV negative by taking this. So Travada was originally developed and indicated for people that are HIV positive for treatment. Mm. Good to the last drop. So when people talk about this new medication, they're not really talking about a new medication. We're talking about medicines that have been around now for about 20 years. But their indication is new. So when I refer to PrEP, that is what is called pre-exposure prophylaxis. When the FDA approved use of Travada as PrEP, I naively thought that that meant everyone was going to learn about it and was sadly disappointed when that wasn't true. And then I decided that if no one else was going to do this kind of work, I'm going to do it. I started a group on Facebook. We now have 5,032 members as of today. 147 of which just joined in the past week. So we're on the, uh, the way to the lab here. Um, these are the people who work at the Gladstone Institute of Virology and Immunology, and uh, including my laboratory and other laboratories. We study how HIV causes disease here and drug resistance. We also study HIV transmission. In the United States, we have 50,000 new HIV infections every single year, and that has not changed in the last 20 years. Men who have sex with men are disproportionately impacted by HIV around the world, having a 19-fold higher prevalence of infection than the general population. Uh, this is an epidemic that's out of control, and so finding new ways to prevent HIV is critically important. We had been interested in using uh, antiviral drugs to prevent the acquisition of HIV for some time, and so once Travada became approved for HIV treatment, 
we immediately proposed to evaluate whether it could work for PrEP as well. Trivada is a single tablet that contains two medications. One is called tenofovir and the other is called emtricitabine. Both of those medications block the HIV life cycle. So people can still be exposed to HIV-infected fluids, but the virus cannot spread inside the body because the medications prevent viral spread from cell to cell. Clinical trials are essential for knowing whether a medicine actually works or not. I had an opportunity to lead the IPREX trial. The goal of the IPREX trial was to show whether Truvada was effective for HIV prevention and whether it was safe. When we first started presenting our data, we always emphasized how well it worked. And uh, finally, we started asking people, why are you choosing to use PrEP or not? And the people who chose not to use PrEP always said, I'm afraid of the safety. You told me all these things about how well it works, but my concern is, is it safe? And people should feel assured that they can use it safely and, and that it'll work if they take it. So I'm about to see my doctor, Howard Grossman, for my quarterly PrEP screening. Have a seat. So, how's it going? Pretty well. Well, I've, I've been involved with HIV since the beginning of the epidemic. So when I was in training, I, I usually say when I hit the wards, the first cases of HIV were hitting the wards as well. First, I'm going to swab your throat, okay. and we'll end up swabbing your anus. Come on, relax. Okay. You can do better than that. <laughs> So my protocol for the PrEP process is I have them come in every three months. And every three months, I see them. We talk about their sexual activity, whether they're taking the drug, how often they're taking it. And we test for HIV, we test their kidney function, and we test for sexually transmitted infections to make sure they're not having some idiosyncratic reaction to Truvada. No, oh, you get Big Bird. All right. This is one of the biggest selling and biggest used HIV drugs in the world. It wouldn't be if a significant numbers of people had real problems. The two main side effects are, first, a decrease in bone mineral density. Bone mineral density, we know people get checked for osteoporosis. It's not progressive. It doesn't lead to increased fractures. So we say that it is statistically significant, because you can see it on a graph, but it's not clinically significant. The more important side effect is a drop-off in kidney function, and that's something that's been relatively common, but generally in most people, that drop-off still stays within the normal range. The, the only other side effect is some incidence of abdominal upset. It's, it's not very common, but it has been reported. And it goes away. The secondary benefit here is that we're doing a lot more STD testing, that people are coming in more regularly. They're getting HIV tested four times a year, they're getting STD testing four times a year, and we're talking about sex a lot more, which is really good. Once I had been using it for a year, and the FDA approved it, and more of the science came out, I felt much more assured that Truvada would protect me if I was exposed to HIV, and for the most part, gave up using condoms, and now I don't use condoms, don't use condoms in my sexual well. encounters. Okay. Not with people that are positive, not with people who are negative identified. Do you worry about STDs at all? I am concerned about STDs. I'm not gonna worry about STDs. I feel like I've spent enough of my life losing sleep over consequences of sexual behavior. My name is Michael Weinstein. I'm president of the AIDS Healthcare Foundation and also a co-founder. And uh, we provide medical services to 36 countries and 381,000 patients across the world. Being in the hospice business, so to speak, I saw hundreds and hundreds of people perish as a member of an older generation that lived through the worst of it. I feel like I have a moral responsibility to tell young people where things are at, whether they want to hear it or not. So the question about PrEP is, does the scientific data support it as a public health intervention? And that answer is conclusively no. Adherence is a huge obstacle. 
Getting people to take their medication every day is very difficult. So when you're looking to control the spread of HIV across a whole population group, it has not been effective. I mean, I see really there being a war on prevention. We, we need to revive the prevention movement that existed in the 80s and 90s. We're gonna do that by distributing condoms in bars, by putting out billboards. Uh, this is an ad called, What If You're Wrong About PrEP? And this is an open letter to uh, the Centers for Disease Control. Unfortunately, there's been so much controversy and debate about PrEP um, that it's left many people confused. One person who claims to be an expert says PrEP doesn't work. Other people say it does work. One person says nobody can take a pill a day. Other people say, well, of course you can take a pill a day. It's a personal choice. I see you know, more and more people saying that gay men have a right to have unprotected sex. The majority of gay and bisexual men gave up consistent condom use a decade before PrEP ever became available. So for people to think that a message that didn't even work in 1992 is going to work effectively in 2015, when the consequences of being HIV positive are no longer death, it's irrational. You need to understand that people are coming in begging for this drug, and they know they have to take it every day, and so they do. I think we could be sitting on a, something that could change the course of this epidemic. I think it remains to be seen how well we can make PrEP available. The reason it has not been widely implemented is very complicated. One just has to do with lack of information and education. People just don't know about this. The other thing that gets in the way of people accepting PrEP is that we're talking about anal sex. Chock full of nets. A lot of doctors and nurses are uncomfortable talking about anal sex and pleasure. A lot of gay people are ashamed and embarrassed to talk about the anal region as a source of pleasure and intimacy. I think anything related to sex is going to be controversial. Uh, people have a lot of judgment around other people's sexuality and their sexual practices. I think sex is such a powerful experience that we care about it. Um, I just wish that we could find ways to, to talk about it in less judgmental ways. The most common misconception about the leather community, I believe, is that we're all a bunch of filthy, awkward, kinky people that like hurting each other, <laughs> which is not true. Um, I think that the leather community is probably the most sex positive community, the most inclusive community, and the most well-educated community that is out there. My company stands very closely behind new advances when it comes to sexual health. Our mission is to alleviate misconceptions and to teach. And yes, predominantly in regards to BDSM sex, because it's great. So we're on the infamous fourth floor at kink.com at the San Francisco Armory. Behind you, you see a great closet full of toys that the kinky person will know what all of this is for. And oh God, what is all of this? I'm probably the least kinky person in this building, quite honestly. Well, I've worked in HIV nonprofit as a volunteer for about 10 years between Berlin, London, and the United States. So with that, when PrEP rolled around, I wanted to bring proper education and knowledge to the people, um, letting them know on a level that is easy for them to understand. So I've hosted about 27 PrEP panels between the US, Canada, and Europe in the last six months, really. Who knows how HIV is transmitted? Blood. Blood? Blood's one. What else? Semen. <laughs> So <laughs> Just today, 137 people in this country will get HIV. And my question is, what are we really doing today to stop this? Are we really looking at sexual health in schools? Are we really thinking about what is it all that we can do? I think PrEP is a huge, huge mover in this. Because for the first time ever, do we have an actual choice that is relevant to how I have sex. Karen, I'm doing fine, I'm doing fine. Good. I understand you want to talk about PrEP today. Yes. I have about a, between 150 and 120 people at this point. It's hard to keep track because every day I'm writing more prescriptions. And I haven't seen a single seroconversion converting from HIV negative to HIV positive. 
Just for reference, Dr. Howard Grossman here in New York City currently has 115 to 120 patients currently on Truvada without a single sero conversion to date. How do you respond to that? That's great. Yeah, I mean, um, but what's the nature of his clientele? Is it uh, young, uh, poor African Americans and Latinos, or is it you know wealthy professional Upper uh, West Side uh, people? Some people have said that uh, prep is a affluent white men's drug. Um, I haven't seen that as the case. Now, I'm not saying that it may not be true. Let me go back. Prep, unfortunately, has made it clear that there are health disparities and health care disparities, disparities in access to good information. And, and sadly, we are seeing that PrEP is rolling out primarily among well-resourced, relatively privileged people. HIV bears a disproportionate burden on communities of color. As well, our communities, black and brown communities, lack the access that our white counterparts have to health care. Harlem United has a rich history in doing HIV prevention for communities of color. PrEP was sort of a natural and logical extension of that work. Ready? You know, PrEP is more than just the pill. PrEP involves the cost of care and resources involved in getting care to folks. So it's the lab work, the testing, and the cost of visits has to be sort of accounted for when you're trying to make PrEP accessible to people. What we know is that we have the tools. Uh, I mean, we have condoms, we have education, now we have PrEP, and that is not to say that everybody is gonna be on PrEP. Certainly, PrEP is not for everyone. But what I wanna convey is that it's an option for everyone. I have a few questions that I laid out. The first one is, given the recommendations put forth by New York State's ending the epidemic task force, where I am a member representing Harlem United of Governor Cuomo's ending the epidemic task force. He wanted to initiate a plan to end AIDS by 2020, and he wanted that plan to be framed in three main pillars. One, make sure all New Yorkers are tested for HIV and know their status. Two, anybody who's HIV positive can be linked and retained in care. And three, facilitate access to PrEP. On paper, it looks wonderful, but we all know that when you roll things out, they don't go as expected. So a lot of what I'll be doing is trying to listen to the community and figure out who is falling through the cracks and who are we still not reaching. Nos toca una noche larga hoy. Mi nombre es Lorena Borjas. Yo soy de mexicana, eh, hispana, latina. Me identifico como una mujer transgénero. Yo hago communities alcances, pero en sí yo estoy enfocada en la comunidad trans. A estos servicios muchas de las chicas que yo alcanzo no saben que ese medicamento existe. Entonces como que existe la barrera de ellos poder acceder. Esto va a quedar grabado para para siempre. Sí, está preciosa la foto. La verdad que no es una tarea fácil. Ser mujer transgénero, ser emigrante y no saber el idioma inglés es un problema muy difícil. En muchas de las clínicas no tienen traductores, no tienen cómo atender al paciente que habla español. Pero entonces hoy lunes lo que hacemos es anunciar el programa, inscribir personas nuevas para que vengan a la clínica y de una u otra forma hacerle llegar el mensaje. Algunas personas saben del medicamento, pero todavía no les ha llegado la información. So, como que debemos de promocionar, llevar más información a las personas. So, I'm really excited to create this Facebook page for a panel that I'm going to be part of at GMHC in a month. I didn't know how 
much fear was part of every sexual encounter I had had and every sexual thought I had had throughout my entire adult life. I did not even begin to unravel that until I started using PrEP and that fear started to lift. I'm still unpacking how profound that is. Welcome to our New York update for PrEP. First of all, I'm so excited. I want to thank everybody for coming out in this weather to be here. I am so what I have seen of all ages now is the expansive freedom that PrEP is allowing us to have intimacy with partners of any HIV status. It has drastically changed the sexual and emotional and psychological landscape of interactions with others. Did you ever try the strawberry jam that we bought that one time? Where? The strawberry wham? The spicy one? No, I don't think so. <clears throat> <sighs> wow. My name is Michael, and this is Leo. And I'm an HIV carrier, and Leo is negative. And we've been together for a year and a quarter. I am an HIV carrier, but I am undetectable, which means I am on HIV treatment, which suppresses the virus in my body to undetectable levels. It's not something that I feel ashamed of or afraid of. For me, it's just important that it doesn't ever get past me. I just don't ever want to give it to anybody else. I have to buy oregano <clears throat> and basil. Yes. Good one. I actually heard about Truvada as PrEP in 2010. I had a lot of reservations about it in the beginning. Pharmaceutical intentions, uh, side effects. Um, it took a lot of studies to come out and a lot of opinions. I was very suspicious about it and I was really, really reserved. And you know, sometimes you have to just go on the side of hope with things. And the hope for me in the beginning a year ago was that I hoped that this would enable us to just leapfrog past this issue or this virus or whatever. And it really did. And I can say that whatever issues we have as a relationship, none of them are HIV related. And that is... That blows my mind. That is like such what some of the that's the best feeling ever, you know? It's it's a freedom I never thought I'd see in my lifetime. I thought I was gonna be scared of it till the day I died. So when you're doing sunny side, do you just leave them alone? Or you gotta flip them over? No, you don't the sunny side up is just just like that. Yeah. So then how does that cook the top cook? It just doesn't cook, it just it's just kinda runny. So then the so then what are they called when you flip them over? Fried. Really? Yep. What causes a lot of stigma it comes from this fear, you know, and, and suddenly there's something to explore that erases that fear. Status is still a very important thing here. Know your status. But know your status doesn't mean know your status so that you know if you're positive you can't have sex with me. Know your status really means get tested and if you are positive, then you can get treated for it so that you're not at risk of infecting someone else. Mm -hmm. That's really what that's all about. And if you're negative, then get on PrEP so that you can build that barrier. A lot of the critiques that come from people towards other people who think that they're only using it to have condomless sex is really slut-shaming and really a lot of the self-loathing that we've developed over the years through fear. Some people will take it so that they can just feel comfortable and they're still gonna wear condoms all the time. Other people are gonna use it so that they can go to some bareback orgy three times a week. It's a personal choice, and it's a personal choice, but that also affects the community as a whole in terms of getting rid of this disease and getting rid of passing it along as well as catching it. It's such a cycle that's continued and it finally has a stop to it. HIV is a stigmatized infection. I mean, the fact that it's still spreading around the world at root is because of stigma. My hope is that as we talk more about PrEP, people will have a chance to reconsider their attitude about HIV. It's not part of people's identity. It's just another thing that some people have. It is a manageable thing that uh, we can help each other through.
of applause for these amazing, amazing people. It does sometimes feel in this work that, uh, not just HIV, but in advocacy work, that you know we're trying to solve problems that will never be solved <laughs> in our lifetime. And yet here's a problem that I actually believe can be solved in my lifetime and before my son graduates high school. So I think, let's do it. <laughs> I think uh, this epidemic has to go. Uh, I think we have to end it. I think we know how to end it, and I think we need to use what we know works in terms of treatment and prep. I think if we do all of that, this epidemic will end. Attacking the condom culture is very, very destructive. Being so careless about uh, STDs uh, is going to have a bad outcome, even if we don't know exactly what that outcome will be. I just want to make sure that people are empowered to make the decision that is right for them. Just because a choice may not be for you, allow others that choice. I think we have a way of ending this epidemic. There are multiple other things people can do, but Truvada offers us a game-changing way to do it.